Oh cool, yeah, this has got a red dot. Cool. Well hey, um, I'm here with uh, Jimmy Duresta, whatever, we're at WorkbenchCon. I figured I'd take the opportunity with meeting the Godfather and uh, ask him a couple cool questions. Right um, Thank you. So we'll see what's going on. Right so I just kind of threw some stuff together. I figured we'd start with like some rapid fire, you know, stupid general, generic interview questions. So what's your favorite color? Red. Red, solid. Uh, what's your spirit animal? Uh, a uh, 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 spirit animal. Wow, that's a good question. You tough something. one, right? I think I'm I'm a year of the lamb, so. The year of the lamb? Yeah. So I'm lamb. A lamb. Yeah, I'm okay. a lamb. Okay. I'll, I'll out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your favorite medium to work in? Uh, wood, steel probably. Steel, I wood for many years because it was accessible to me. And then as steel becomes more accessible to me, it's it's more rewarding than wood. The butt joint is a lot easier and more it's, reliable. Yeah, so you glue don't dries stuff faster. As much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the paint is just a can of rattle can. That's all it is, <laughs> usually. So do you consider yourself an artist, a tinker, a hobbyist, or a maker? Uh, I guess all of the above. I mean, I guess artist is a blanket term. My, yeah. my tax return for the last 30 years has said artist, inventor. Artist inventor, yeah, nice. That's what my tax return says. So I guess that's what I am. Better write-offs, higher from the IRS. Won't that basically this. means if I buy a cake, or if I buy a pair of jeans, or if I buy a house, or if I buy a car, everything's write-offable because it's part of my research. Perfect. No. Noted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's your least favorite tool? Like mine's a jigsaw. I hate those things. Uh, a jigsaw can be really good in a certain circumstance. Like people think it's good for finished tool. It's really yeah. just for processing, you know, yeah. scrap material together or apart or whatever it is. My the tool I hate the most, it's a good question, is fucking screw guns. Yeah. I fucking can't stand screw guns that slip when the tip slips. That drives me crazy. It makes me not want to touch I saw them. your Robertson posts and I was like, <laughs> how do I do that? Like I, I Phillips heads are the worst. Phillips head screws. That's the, the Phillips head screw and screwdriver. That's my worst favorite. I hate them. Like and the thing so is not supposed to slip but they do all the time. And even the torques like if you, unless you have the perfect size bit it just yeah. strips it out. It's like They'll you insert it, yeah. a drill bit and it just grinds the whole inside of the screw out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that probably I mean other than that I really do love all tools because they're all just a means to an end. Yeah. Just get the job done, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a paintbrush or whatever. Yeah. Okay, here's a couple questions kind of like about how you come up as a maker. So I heard about you um, talking about being intimidated about making knives, right? Yeah. So I'm like terribly intimidated about making chairs, all the compound angles and yeah. like the t fine joinery for like sure. making somebody, something somebody can sit on. Yeah. But like what now is something that intimidates you? Like what's a project that you would feel like you're biting off more than you could chew or something? Heat treating knives. Heat treating knives. Yeah, knives and heat treating knives. That's why, I mean, I'm in the middle of a couple of knife projects which kind of have slowed down. Basically, and I think back, like, why have three weeks passed and I haven't finished it? Just because I'm intimidated to do it wrong. Yeah. You know, and but I got to get over that fear. You know, it's part of just getting through it, working through it, and just doing, make sure she doesn't grab you. Yeah. <laughs> She's gonna that grab tasty, you. doggy? She's going to grab that little strap. Um, <laughs> yeah, just making sure I do it right. And it's That's a rabbit it. hole, too, man. Yeah. You're in heat treating, and they're like, well, it's got to be, you know, perfect, and it's got to be as hard as possible. It's yeah. like any, like, ductility and yeah. hardness and, like, resistance to shatter and, like, <laughs> Yeah, and that's, that that's uh, definitely a pain in the ass. What is, like, an innovative small shop solution? What do you think is, like, the most innovative small shop solution you came up with in your small shop in New York City? Is that east side Manhattan, right? Yeah. Um, hmm, let me see. Mick? you got to have good in-feed and out-feed. So, yeah. you know, placement of the table saw is really important because you got to process eight foot material. And then I put it in a certain circumstance where I could process either an eight foot piece of plywood or 16 foot pieces of trim or, or boards. You know, if you get like a piece of, mm -hmm. you know, 10 foot piece of poplar. But where it's just like a hallway instead yeah, of like a hallway. Yeah, there's a hallway space. right outside the door. So if the door closed, you could do eight feet. With the door open, you could do longer. So, like, what kind of work did you build that shop around? Was it just like tinkering, or was it just for? I actually, like, I, the shop originally was my my storage unit, and I was working for a company, and then the company went out of business, and then I turned around and I was like, "Well, I'm gonna go broke. I gotta figure out how to make a living." So I was working, even though I was like always a subcontractor. I was working as a toy inventor within a company, and I had just gotten that space just to kind of have a little place to tinker on my own. Mm -hmm. uh, we had closed the previous shop, and that was sort of the residue of that bigger previous shop. We were kind of running out of money, my brother and I. We ended up going to work for our biggest client. So when we closed our big fab shop, which was all about toys, not really metal work, we, I moved into that basement. It's just to have a shop because yeah. you know not having a shop is you know like a declawed cat. But then I worked at the office most of the time in the product development room, which had like a little bit of like welding, well, soldering, bandsaw, Dremel tool, that kind of stuff. And uh, then when that company went out of business, I was left to my own and. I said, instead of getting another gig at another company, I really got to figure this out on my own. So I turned that basement space into my fab shop, making interior design stuff. 
just slowly getting jobs and just basically saying yes to everything and not not editing and not saying no and not saying well maybe I just say yeah I'll do it and then I go figure it out. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll <laughs> no, figure it. I got it. I got it. Don't worry about this. Yeah. So, what is your favorite YouTube video you've done so far? And was it your favorite project or just your favorite video? So like, I loved the way that you approached the table saw safety video. I thought that was really cool. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's a popular one. A lot of people comment on that. My bandsaw video. All my tip series is really good. You know, I'm really proud of that. Uh, I like the tip series. I have many more. I have a whole one tape with Jody and, and JD, the welders inside. Mm -hmm. I just have to get to the getting. But um, my tip series is fun. I'm real proud of. My vlogs, I'm really proud of. Some of the vlogs. There is no one thing. I mean, my most rewarding video as far as financially uh, talking is the guitar video where I made the AK-47. It's at 11 million views, which is, I never imagined. Will I Am's guitar? Uh, no, uh, Wyclef. Oh, Wyclef. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that was pretty good. And it's the only guitar video I ever made. I've made 25, 30 guitars, but it's the only one I ever taped. So I need to do that again. It seems like a good formula, but I've just got to get to the getting. So as far as like, you know, controversial, funny, well shot, shows a lot of skills, the guitar video is pretty good. I like that one. I, yeah. I, I actually didn't find out about you from that one, but I was like going back through and just kind of watch some of your old stuff. And I, like, I have so many videos, cool. I'm so happy that to be able to once in a while kind of scroll through and go, oh, I forgot I made that. <laughs> oh shit, this is cool. I wonder how I did it's this. It's like the notebook of projects, but you don't really keep it just on YouTube. And you got to yeah, it. it's funny. I go back and I'm like, oh shit, well, I don't even know what I'm going to do next. Oh wow, that's cool. <laughs> oh, I did I remember already. that. I didn't, I, just, I didn't even remember doing that. I, <laughs> I got to re re remember to do that more often, you know, so it's fun. It's, it's so. Um, I may be misspeaking about this, but I think I remember you talking about your dad was like a carpenter. My like dad, a yeah, my dad was a maker kind of and a carpenter. He's a New York fireman, but he's also a handyman and a carpenter. So he did, built houses did he inspire you to start making? And like, does he influence like the way that your workflow is inside the shop? I don't know. What's Sounds that? like a jet just took off. I know, seriously. Uh, yeah, my dad. My dad is the biggest the reason why I am where I am. Yeah. He handed me tools at a young age, and and did not get too uptight about me poking myself with a chisel or cutting my thumb on a jigsaw. He's like, hey, just don't get hurt. Don't do that again. I mean, yeah, when I was <laughs> seven, seven, eight years old, I was working on the jigsaw. and the, I started working on the cross-cut radial arm saw, which to me, I think, is the most dangerous tool ever made. I got one. I haven't turned it on yet. Yeah, the radial arm, <laughs> I was using the radial arm saw at 10, 11, 12 years old. I mean, my dad trusted me enough. He just said, don't put your hand in that path and you'll be safe. Yeah. And that's it. And he goes, and whenever the thing's at rest, make sure you lock the back. And did his... Like the way he worked in a shop, did that like influence your workflow? Because you're like really unique the way you move around a shop and like just like the get it done mentality and like yeah, really definitely. approaching things. My dad like definitely, uh, you know, like my little tricks and tips, a lot of that is inspired by my dad. Some of them are directly taken from my dad, some of them are inspired by. You know, he just puts you in a certain mindset. I mean, I get a lot of what would Jimmy do emails. Yeah. And people sending me cool stuff. What would Jimmy do? And you inspired me to think of this. And I'm like, whoa, I wouldn't have thought of that. That's cool. You know, like the other day, uh, my buddy Caleb sent me a message where he said, what would, he goes, I had to cut a bunch of metal square tubing, but I had to be precise. And all I had was an angle grinder. How do I do it? So he mounted the angle grinder to the table, perpendicular to the table. Oh, you know, then, Caleb, uh, you can make this too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so guy. he had a, he stuck the metal in and cut him like one side at a time perfectly and got him exactly where he needed. Yeah, I saw he was like uh, OSHA approved on the like, yeah, little yeah. Instagram story about it. So yeah, that's so that was, uh, that's cool. I, I like being, you know, the reason for people's out of the box thinking. So I don't want to date you and I don't want to date myself. I'm 51. Yeah. <laughs> but who was your favorite maker growing up? Cause like, like, I had like, Norm was huge to me. Yeah. Norm definitely has always been a big thing. This old house has always been such a big, oh, man. a big part of growing up. It's 41 year, 40 year old show. Yeah. So this old house has always been a big part. And Bob Vila, even though Bob Vila never really made anything, he was always like a big personality and a joke amongst me and my brothers. He's and the, you the, know, the Kevin O'Connor of our childhood. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, and then uh, the Woodwright. Woodwright shop, the guy that was always sweating with all the hand tools. What's <laughs> yeah. his name? I forget his name. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. He yeah, wears yeah, a little yeah. floppy cap. Yeah, and he would do like one continuous take for 30 minutes. Like, <laughs> Look what I made. And he'd be like, that would take me like three days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that him, I forget his name. And uh, and of course, Norm. You know, These yeah. were the only things that I was exposed to growing up. And then, of course, my dad and my uncle, people around me that I got to see personally. But as far as you know, the media goes, those three guys. I wonder, I mean, with your like TV experience, like I haven't seen anybody take steel to the mainstream the way that like this old house and Norm took like woodworking to the mainstream. Well, it's funny. I, my, my welding project is the first welding project ever on this, this old house. Really? In 30, they said the first time anybody on this old house ever welded. It's just, everybody actually gets, I mean, it takes skill and talent and whatever, but it's, everybody seems like so intimidated by it, but yeah. it's just, it's Well, that's why, you know, it's funny. People say logic. like, why do you work for Lincoln? You're a hack. 
I'm like, I might be a hack, but it, it doesn't take much more than a you hack to until weld. You get stuff done. Yeah, you know, it, it, not welding. Welding's not all about, you know, passing in a certified welding test with the state. Well, and not everybody needs to machine everything to the nth degree. That's it's it. just I mean, it's just another farm tool. It's another tool in the shop to connect metal together. Maybe you got to make a longer bolt than you weld it. Maybe you got to make a longer drill bit. So that's why I am in the position to to promote Lincoln products because I'm not a certified welder. I'm not building, you know, airtight cooling systems. You know what I mean? Yeah, just whatever works, right? Yeah, so I'm the kind of guy that's making furniture like. Um, so this, these are on kind of from the maker questions into some more like, not personal, but more like lifestyle mm -hmm. questions, yeah. more about Jimmy. Yeah. So you worked with like this old house, Wyclef, mm -hmm. you know, Chris Rock, tons of bands in New mm -hmm. York. Did you have a big fangirl moment with any of those people, or do New Yorkers just not get fangirl moments? <laughs> fangirl moments. Funny. I, I got to be friends with Nick before he became famous, so it's funny that... Uh, Nick Kroll? I, yeah, no, no, not Nick Kroll. Nick I know Offerman? Nick Kroll, too. <laughs> yeah? I knew Nick Kroll before he got famous, too. I love too. that guy. Yeah. He, Nick, uh, Nick Offerman. Nick, Nick Offerman and Nick Kroll, who happen to also be friends. I knew both of those guys before. Uh, Nick is always... Nick Offerman has been working for many years as an actor so he's got credits forever but yeah. if, you know before he became Ron Swanson well, he was a character actor for a long so time saying, I met him through a TV show he did with my brother um, did I ever get starstruck by anybody I met Robert De Niro with my brother I guess that's probably the most starstruck I got I just shook his hand and said hello and my brother was doing a movie with him and it would have been funny to spend a couple of minutes with him because my brother had kind of warmed him up to just go f goofing around because yeah. they'd been on the set for weeks and uh, so I guess I guess meeting Robert De Niro, and for one split second, another movie my brother did was with um, Kate Hudson. Just yeah. said hello to her over like a tape line. Hey, nice to meet you. You know, but you know those guys, they, they have like big star power. You know, of course. But you live in New York your whole life, and yeah, I mean, I never, I never asked, I never asked anybody for an autograph. Yeah, I never had the, the gumption to ask for an autograph. Cause, <laughs> and, and at the end of the day, I don't want to put them out because I know I won't, say, I won't cherish it. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is cool. I'll put it with my receipts. It'll get packed into 2014 and I'll never see it again. You know what I mean? So I'm not that kind of guy like where I organize shit. So I yeah. never asked anybody for an autograph because I know <laughs> I'll embarrass myself and then I won't cherish it. Well, so. Oh, no. What was that? <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. I, I've, I was kind of just raised as just everybody's people. So treat everybody <coughs> people because... That's what yeah. it all boils down to. Yeah. Give everybody human respect. And yeah, I mean, I met Dane Cook a bunch of times with my brother. He's so nice. Dane yeah. Cook was funny. I actually really liked Dane Cook. Um, I don't know. I can't think of anybody super famous. Oh, you know, the biggest person I ever met, and she was really sweet. I just shook her hand. We were at a party together. Um, Isabella Rossellini. She's probably the biggest, most famous person I ever met. She's we were at my friend had a gallery show. She's a famous Italian actress. Yeah. And I'm like, I said to my buddy, I'm like, this is Isabella Rossellini. Because I recognize the voice. She had a very distinctive voice. And this is 15 years ago. She's, you don't see her anymore. And, uh, and I said, I go, oh, I'm a big fan. She said, oh, thank you. She had a great, sweet voice. I met Ellen Page briefly. Yeah. We were at a luncheon together. She was super cool. So, yeah. I mean, in yeah. New York, you know, you, know, you Not just, too much you you just, just hit it and quit it. You don't yeah. want to anybody. <laughs> You're here at WorkbenchCon. You're giving a lot of talks about, like, adversity and failure and things like that. Not sure if you knew that. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> um, <laughs> Do you have any advice for makers looking to make a profession out of their hobby or for anyone looking to, like, strike it up on YouTube? Like, what's, yeah. what do you feel is, like, the key thing? You just got to fully commit. Yeah. That's it. You got to commit, and you got to really learn from your mistakes. You know, I look back at videos, and I say, oh, God, look, what the hell did I do that for? I'm never going to do that again. You really got to be conscientious about what you're doing, and you got to be conscious of what you're doing. You know, you, people start, they start a video, and... It rambles on, and then they make ten videos, and every video is people rambling on. You really gotta, you know, pace them, quick pace, uh, show unique, interesting stuff. Um, I talk about this in the talk this weekend, but it's really important to bring out what's your unique talent. You know, what's your unfair advantage? Is yeah. what they say in a lot of these podcasts you listen to. What is your unfair advantage? You might be not making the most original, perfect stuff, but your presentation, your voice, if you're a beautiful girl, or if you're an attractive guy, or even if you're an ugly guy, but you got a quirky, weird, funny sense about you that makes people like you. Steer into it. Steer into it fully, yeah. you know, commit. That's it. You know, it's, it's not all about being, you know, super hot girl, you know, or, you know, super handsome guy with abs. Of course, it's not about that. But you, we know what you're hiding. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, you just got to figure out what it is that makes you unique and, and you know, sh like Nick Offerman said in an interview I heard once, he said, what is your weirdness? And don't suppress it, express it. Yeah. And what that's, makes that's you really weird? True. And that's, that's like hard to embrace because yeah. that's like the whole cliche, like finding your voice is like, 
finding what makes you unique. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, no one's ever done this before, or no one's ever crushed this in the press before, or no yeah. one's ever set this on fire or blew this up. Sometimes it is all those things have been done, but it's the way you present it which makes it more fun and more interesting. Well, yeah. So, yeah, so that's that's really good advice is about, like, you know, finding your weird, steering into yeah. it, kind of like finding your voice, whatever. Yeah. Um, and just really finding something you can <clears throat> do that makes you different. I, I always tell people, like, that ask me, like, how do you edit your videos? I'm like, well, if you're watching it and you're bored, like, imagine what somebody who doesn't know who you are is going to think. Right. So, like, exactly. I always, like, watch it. I'm like, yeah, that sucks. I'm going to cut that. No, it's funny. When <laughs> I watch my videos and I watch them back, I'm like... I keep my hand on the stop button. And I'm like, as, as each clip comes up on camera, I'm like, emotionally, I hit the stop button. And then it's got two more seconds. I cut that two seconds off. And I'm like, okay, this, okay, I'm going to do this, okay. Emotionally, stop. And then it's got five extra seconds. I cut that five seconds off. I've started doing, like you said on a podcast, uh, like come in late and leave early. Yep, kind I of learned that, that from concept. a David Mamet book. Yeah, that's super smart, and it yeah. makes everything flow a lot better too. Yeah, because it looks By like the you're way, already there. Joel, who just left, Joel makes the little uh, the knife rack of the guy, like the Spartan guy, like this. Oh, that's his design. That's his design, but that's I'm saying and everybody's that, knocked it off. But that's all he's ever made. So he's you know internet famous p for one product. <laughs> so that's he doesn't need to set the world on fire. He's not crushing bowling balls inside of a hydraulic press. He's doing it. He's got a niche. What's the biggest mistake you've made in your career? Cut my finger off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the biggest mistake. That seems, that seems smart. Yeah. <laughs> this, that was just an amateur mistake after using the same saw for more than 20 something years, the same saw I've had in my life. You got too comfortable. Yeah, that's it. And, uh, you know, I learned a tremendous amount of just, you know, stop being so cocky. Yeah. And you can apply it to a lot of things, but yeah. definitely, yeah. That's probably the most. I mean, as far as other mistakes, everything I've made has led me to where I am, so. And even this, I mean, me being an advocate for safety, you know, I don't mind being the, the schmuck. To tell people to slow down and work. You know, there's a couple guys on YouTube now who've been injured and they talk about it and it's good. Yeah, that is good. I, I like I like just the genuineness and just being open about that stuff. Yeah. Um, do you want to roll off YouTube? Do you want to get back into TV or do you like staying on YouTube or do you just kind of want to see just let let life happen? Uh, let life happen. But if, if an interesting TV project pops up, like NBC came up and everyone's like, you're a fool if you don't do this. It's not everything you wanted. You're not the executive producer. It's not your idea. I'm like the tenth banana on the show. But you have NBC on your credits. Yeah. My agent's like, if you know, if this show does well and your name's attached to it, it says, you know, the next couple of years could be real easy. But I'd do TV if it was something that was good and the producers yeah. and everybody weren't a bunch of shitheads. I think if you could build, if you could bring something like New Yankee Workshop, but with steel mm -hmm. onto networks, yeah. that would blow up. I think that'd yeah. be awesome. I, I mean, I talk about projects all the time. They never go anywhere. Yeah. You know, these producers don't know anything. Or like they happen two years down the road when you're like, uh, I don't have any time anymore. <laughs> exactly. I mean, YouTube is passing, is, you know, it's going to blow by all these network mm -hmm. shit concepts. Yeah. Um... Every one of the, I used to say every one of your ideas sucks, so if you have something, it better be good. Yeah. I said that on my, I took that down because I looked a little too uptight. <laughs> uh, so kind of winding down here, um, are there any other YouTubers that inspire you? Like, is there somebody, like, I know Alex Steele, when he throws something up, I'm like, uh, if I could well, be I, that guy, like, Alex oh is amazing, God. of course, Alex Steele's amazing. There's so many, uh, J, JD and, and, uh, and Jody, you know, they happen to be right here. Uh, Tony Rouleau, who makes those hand planes, he makes mm -hmm. the little beautiful uh, oh, Instagram. Yeah. That's, that's him. Yeah, um, everybody. I mean, the whole community in, in, as a whole. You know, it's like whenever we hang out, it's such a warm, welcoming feeling. You know, honestly, I mean, it sounds so hokey, but it really, it really is nice. Like, you know, I think we've all found our place in this world for now. You know, and it's only just going to get better. I hope. And you know, even when people like blow up and get big, it's like you know, no one's a cocky asshole in this pro You know, in this community. And it's really nice. I think like we were talking about right before we got on camera is like, at no point, I don't think will it ever, at least to me, feel like I'm anything more than some schmuck that's putting videos yeah. up on the internet. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the point <laughs> you're making. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and I learn all the time, you know, I mean, I might have popularity, but I'm not, I'm not an expert, you know, I'm yeah. not an expert welder. I'm not an expert woodworker. You know, my dovetails suck. You know, I'm no fucking wood whisperer, but. Hey, Jimmy, it's okay. You're good at everything. The only thing I don't suck at is woodworking. I, I, what I really want to show more than anything is creativity and and getting and get getting out there and doing it really more than anything. I mean, that's the most the most uh, e the email I get most often is you know you really encourage me to just get off my ass and get started. I cleaned out my workshop for the first time in ten years. You know, I haven't been down there in ten years, and now I'm there every day. I can't get enough yeah. of it. <laughs> I was on the I was on the mi a faking it podcast yeah. with, with Dave Welder and and Mike Laffey and. And the guys in uh, in Berkey, and they said, you know, what was like the what is the most uh, 
what was the most heartfelt comment you got? And I said, this girl once wrote a comment under one of my videos. She says, I love your videos because your hands remind me of my dad's hands. And he oh passed away. And all five of us were crying on the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> one by one, you can hear each one of us like choking back tears. And uh, it's getting me right now, actually. Uh, but that was really, and we had a little dialogue, her and I. It was super sweet. She said, you know, you have the same hands as my dad, and I haven't seen him in years. That's, so, that's, that's awesome. So that was really Those cool. kind of things are, I haven't had anything quite to that level, but just little, you know, like, this helped motivate me, or this helped get yeah. me past that hurdle, or I think I'm going to try that now. Like, yeah. all that, that's just, that That tickles me. Yeah. <laughs> the good comments and just something that really, like, hits you in the heart, that's, yeah. that's, a, it's amazing. Yeah, a lot of going. those. And, you know, I get emails from, like, 13-year-old kids that say, how do I, how do I become you? I'm like, God, like, how? That's incredible. Well, you know, first you got to start. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I get, I get it. I'm like, shit, dude, you're on your way. I go, if I was doing what you're doing at 13, you know, I'd be fucking rich right now. I wouldn't be yeah. just a fucking schlub swinging in the trenches. These, these young kids, if I knew what these kids know about their lives at 13, 14, 15 years old, I didn't really know. I mean, I just made shit my whole life because that's what I naturally did. Yeah. But I wasn't, ma- I was making things like the way a fish swims in the water. It just came to me. But I really didn't, I wasn't like super passionate about it until a little bit later in life. You know, maybe until after I went to art school, I guess. Because to me, it was just something I always did. It's like you wake up and you do it. And, and I know that I could make this thing and trade it for money. So like whenever I was looking for a high school job, it's like, okay, I know I'm good with my hands. I can make something for you that you need and you can pay me for it. Yeah. And that's, that was kind of the basics of my, you know. Caveman economics. That's it, you know. What do you need made? What do you need fixed? Yeah. What do you need moved and pushed around? I pick up heavy things and I put them down. <laughs> that's what I'm good at. Well, that's all, of, all the questions I really had for you. I, it's really an honor, man. Oh, right on. Honor to Thank talk you. To you. Thank I mean, you. like you've inspired me to kind of start my channel and I'm sure the, all the people I've watched have watched your videos and inspired them. So it's yeah. it's just cool to talk to, you know, the godfather or whatever people like to call you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's, uh, a, that's a compliment. Yeah, that's it's nice. it's just, it's an honor. So Thank you, man. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Hopefully people okay. get something out of yeah. this. Well, thanks, guys. Thank uh, you. I'm going to try to post some random stuff from WorkbenchCom while I'm down here. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, see you later.